This video is about the process state transition diagram. At any given time, every process on a system is in a given state. Now there are several different models that we can use, and I'll go through some simple ones first and then work up to more complex ones. But this is just a general idea of what common states are. Every individual operating system has its own specific states. Now the simplest model you could have would be one where you have a ready state and a running state. In a model like this, new processes would enter the system in a ready state and then the operating system would pick a ready process to transition into the running state. Now this sort of simple model applies to very old operating systems that only had a single processor so you would only ever have one process in the running state at a time. But of course in modern systems we have multiple CPUs and therefore can have multiple running processes. So we have processes that go from ready to running and after running for a while if you want to make sure that different processes in the system have a chance to run, you may cause a running process to go back to a ready state to give up the processor to another ready process. So the idea is that there are several processes that are ready to go and we pick one to run. It runs for some specified amount of time and then once it's used up that time it gives up the processor so that a different process can run. This is fair because we are making sure that every process gets a turn and it prevents any of the processes that are ready to run from starving. And then after running for a while generally a process will finish and we will terminate or exit. And so this is the simplest two-state model where processes come in, they're ready, they get their turn to run, and then after running for a while they either exit the system or they go back to a ready state. However, this system does not take into account things like interrupts. Interrupts are often used for I.O., input-output operations, because those are very time consuming compared to fast CPU operations. So that means that we're going to add a transition for a blocked state. Now this blocked state is very general. We'll have a transition to it that, as I said, will normally correspond to I.O. happening. But in general, we'll simply say that if some event uh, is being waited on, then the process will go to a blocked state. Then when the event that the process is waiting for occurs, it will transition from a blocked state back to a ready state. So this diagram is getting a bit more complicated, so we're going to have to think about why the different transitions occur. So let's label the actual transitions. So if we go from a ready to a running state, that means that the operating system scheduler has dispatched the process. So one ready process has been chosen to go to the running state. Now the reason that you would go from the running state back to the ready state would be that there was a timeout. This means that every process is allotted a certain amount of time to get its work done, and if it fails to finish within that time, it's still ready to keep going, but it gets pushed back to the ready state to give another process a chance to run. And even if you have multiple CPUs, this timeout will still happen because you're going to have more jobs than you have CPUs. We'll call this transition from running to blocked an event wait transition. An example of this would be if a running process requests data from a file and has to wait for 
the IO module to actually collect and return that data. So the process itself goes to a block state and waits for the event saying that that data has been read in to memory. When that happens, we say that the event occurs, at which point the blocked process can go back to a ready state. We will also explicitly label these exit and entrance states in transitions. So this is an exit state, and we can put name the transition release to indicate that this process has been released from the system. Now, technically speaking, in most operating systems, you can transition to an exit state from any of the other states. The operating system has the power to forcibly terminate a process no matter what state it is in, and sometimes a process will terminate because its parent process terminates or because of some other condition uh, indicated by the OS. So we can exit from anywhere, but to keep things simple, we'll just put the release transition here because the typical normal means of exiting the system is that a running process will complete its work and then voluntarily exit. Now, the reason for this exit state is to allow the process to clear up all of its data and from memory and release all of its resources. So the OS still has some work to do when the process is in the exit state, but the process itself is no longer running, no longer wants to run. Similarly, there is also a new state, and the transition here is labeled admit. So when you first choose to run a process, what first happens is you create a process control block. And at that point, we would say this, the process is in the new state. But before you can actually be in the ready state, some other things have to happen. Generally, the OS has to allocate memory to the process and load its code into memory. So there are a few steps between being brand new and actually being ready to run. So this is a five state model and does a pretty good job of demonstrating the complexity in an actual operating system. But one thing that we are not accounting for is virtual memory, which we will learn more about later, but we need to talk about it now to understand how processes behave. Virtual memory is a way of allowing the operating system to treat a portion of the hard drive as if it were memory. This allows the operating system to store and manage more memory than actually exists on the system. Now, moving data back and forth between memory and the hard drive, which is known as secondary memory, can be very expensive in terms of I.O. operations. So it's not something that we want to do too often. However, modern operating systems have shown us that this extra complexity and extra time cost still pays off because it allows more processes to be under the management of the OS at a time. And if several processes are blocked, they can safely be put off to the disk while waiting for their events to occur. And so we say that such processes have been swapped out or suspended. So typically, if you have a process that is blocked, you may have a situation in which the OS wants to create room and memory for some new processes but can't because of one or more blocked processes. So these blocked processes are wasting memory and preventing other processes from being loaded into memory. So what we'll do is we will suspend the blocked process, thus moving it to a blocked and suspended state. Now even though I've labeled this state with blocked slash suspend, 
it's a single state. It is completely separate from being blocked. A blocked state is still in primary memory, but is waiting for an event to occur. A blocked suspend process is both waiting for an event to occur, to occur and is not in main memory. It's actually been swapped out to the hard drive, to secondary memory. Now when the event occurs that this block suspended process is waiting for, it will move to a ready suspend state. So notice that these two transitions have the same label, but the difference is where is that process on the system? If the process is in main memory and the event occurs, it becomes ready. If the process is on disk, secondary memory, and the event occurs, it is ready but still suspended, hence in the ready suspend state. So to be able to run, the process has to be in main memory. So that means it needs to transition from this ready suspend state into the ready state. And the way that is done is with this activate transition. Essentially, if a process has been on disk for a while and is waiting for its turn to run, or if all of the processes in main memory are blocked, the OS will transition some ready but suspended processes from secondary memory back into main memory and then from here they can be dispatched as usual and run on the processor. So this is the typical cycle of events but there are some other transitions to be aware of. For one thing it's actually possible for a block suspended process to be activated as well which puts it back in a block state. Now this is an unusual transition because we are taking a process that cannot run because it's waiting for an event to occur and then moving it from disk into main memory, hence taking up valuable memory space. So the only reason that you would do this is if you had some reasonable certainty that the event that the process is waiting for is about to occur. You don't want a process to be in a blocked state for long, and you especially don't want to waste time moving it from disk back to memory if it's just going to sit there for a while, preventing other processes from running. So this transition is something you would only do if either you know that this event is about to occur, or if none of the processes in memory can run anyway, and you happen to have room, in which case you may as well move the suspended process over while the CPU is idle. Similarly, you can choose to move a ready state directly to the ready suspend state. So you can directly suspend a ready process. And this once again is a bit unusual because if the process is ready to go, it's kind of costly to move it back to the disk since you know you're going to eventually have to copy it back in anyway. But if memory is simply over full with ready processes, then to be fair to all the different processes and to make room to swap back in some processes that have already been suspended, you may have to sometimes suspend a ready process. So this diagram is fairly complete in terms of the states that are present, but there are still some transitions which may or may not be present depending on the design philosophy behind the system. So when we were designing the earlier state transition diagram with only five states, we transitioned from new directly to ready. And that can still happen. Uh, it's a reasonable design to have, but you may instead want to exclude this transition in favor of a transition from new to ready suspend. And so this is an alternate admit 
transition. And what this shows is that when a process is new, its process control block is created. And then, instead of moving it into the ready state, which involves copying its code into memory and allocating memory for its stack, etc., you simply set that up on the disk. This means that the new process won't interfere with any other running processes or ready processes until it really is fully ready to go and has been completely set up in virtual memory first. However, you could still argue in favor of this new to ready transition because if you've just launched a process, odds are that you want to run it right away. So why waste the time going to this ready suspend state first and then activating the process when you could just go directly to the ready state? Both are valid possibilities. Another transition that you might do, but which you might also argue against, is one from running directly to ready suspend. So once again, we can get from this state to this state by going from running to ready and then from ready to suspend. However, in a sufficiently sophisticated operating system, you may know that some process that you want to run is in a suspended state and it needs some extra memory before it can run. And so you may directly transition this running state to a suspended state to free up some memory for a different process to become ready and then be dispatched. So this transition here is optional and this transition here is probably also optional. You would only have maybe one of the admit transitions and then you could do without this weird transition here but it's definitely a possibility. And then one final reminder that it is possible to transition to the exit state from any of these states really um, if the operating system intervenes. But in the normal course of things, we're going to go from running to exit rather than from any of these other states.